Hey guys, this is Sam. Today I want to show you some of the simplest iOS gestures that you might not know yet. When I was doing research for this video, some of these I had never heard of before and this is like my job. So I hope you learned something new. If you did, feel free to drop a like down below and of course subscribe for more like this in the future and share it with somebody else if you found it useful. All right, jumping in to the video. First up is the calculator app. You may have actually seen this one floating around on Twitter lately. Let's say you're typing in some numbers, doing some multiplication and oh, you actually messed up and pressed the wrong button on the keypad. There's no back button right in front of you, so normally I would just hit the C button for clear and start the equation over. Well, with this gesture, you can swipe back on the black part at the top of the screen and actually delete misclicks or missed numbers when you were typing it in in the first place. This is absolutely crazy, and I cannot believe that I just learned about this about 30 seconds ago. All right, heading back to the home screen, you'll notice that right here, I've got a folder with a red five badge on it. And normally to see which apps those notifications or badges are coming from, you have to tap on it, swipe through a page or two, and then you can see specifically like four are coming from boxed and one is coming from sorted. And if you have an iPhone 6S or newer, you have 3D touch. So you don't have to open the folder to see what's causing the badge. You can just force press like so and see an itemized breakdown of where the notifications are coming from. Next up, if you happen to use the stock mail app, there are a couple things hidden in here as well. So instead of just tapping the compose button to compose an email, tap and hold on that and you'll be able to see a list of all the drafts saved to your account or your iPhone. And if you actually keep pulling up these drafts like so, you can just swipe it down and eventually you'll have a stack that looks a little bit like this. When you tap on that stack, watch what happens. You get something that looks like the Safari web browser view with a blurred version of your background and all your drafts laid out. I didn't know this cascaded view of windows or cards was available anywhere else in iOS, but it follows the same parallax-ish effects as the tabs in Safari do, so pretty crazy. Moving on to Notification Center, there's a chance that you guys might know these two, but they're really handy if you don't. If you have an iPhone 6S or newer and want to clear all notifications at once, there's actually a way to do that. You just force touch on this X right here, and you've got this really nice ability to clear all notifications, which will save you a ton of time. And the second Notification Center gesture that I want to show you, I believe is also new with iOS 10. You just have to be in any app for it to work, like settings, app store, or anything else. You can swipe down about a fifth of the way on your screen like so, and if you have an iPhone 7, you'll actually feel some haptic feedback. If you stop it right there, you have the ability to access Spotlight Search from any application. You don't have to go back to the home screen and swipe down on your app page like you had to do before. Now I want to show you some hidden stuff in Safari because a lot of this is just hiding right in front of you if you just hold and tap rather than just press. So for example, if you're on a regular web page and you want to see the desktop version, just tap and hold on refresh and you get a pop-up near the bottom of your screen asking if you want to request the desktop version of that site. Or if you tap and hold on the tabs button in the bottom right hand corner of your screen, not only do you have the option to create a new tab from here, you can also close all three tabs or X amount of tabs that you already have open. Now moving just one over to the left, if you tap and hold on this bookmarks icon, guess what happens there? You have the option to add a bookmark, add to your reading list, or add to shared links. And finally, if you tap on that window management button to view all your tabs, tap and hold on the plus down here near the middle of your screen and it will allow you to see any tabs that you have recently closed. Now you're probably noticing a trend that a lot of these have to do with 3D touch. So if you have an older iPhone, I apologize, but if we move on over to the keyboard, there are some handy tricks here. So if I'm editing a note or some relatively larger body of text, there are a few things I can do that are incredibly handy. So for example, I'm in this note right here. If you 3D touch and move your finger around the keyboard, you have the ability to move your cursor like so, which is so, so much easier than having to use that terrible little magnifying glass above. However, you can keep pressing on 3D touch like a second and third time to select either a word or a sentence or the entire paragraph in quick succession. Finally, the last thing that I want to show for you relating to the keyboard has to do with the 123 key. I cannot believe this is the first I've ever seen of this. So if you tap and drag, you'll notice that it automatically switches the keyboard for you in one gesture and then you can type in a number or some punctuation. But it also shoots you right back to the main alphabetical keyboard at the same time. So you don't have to waste time tapping back and forth and back and forth when you're typing. Just drag from the 123 key to something else and input some punctuation or a number like so. In the camera app, if you tap and hold like so, it is going to lock the exposure and you'll see it says AE slash AF lock at the top. It looks really good right here, but if you turn somewhere else, the exposure isn't gonna change. So things are gonna look really great or extremely blown out. Moving on, there's a hidden feature in iOS that allows you to turn almost anything that you're looking at with a share sheet present into a PDF. 
You want to tap on the share sheet right here and then tap on print, but don't worry, you're not actually printing anything. What's important is the preview right here. You want to pinch to zoom like so, and it is automatically converted whatever you're looking at into a printable PDF, but also a PDF that you can send to someone or save to Dropbox or iBooks or anywhere else. I feel like this should be so much more prevalent in the operating system, I would never think to pinch to zoom there normally, but now you have a PDF that you can share with anybody. Now the last tip I have for you is once again related to 3D Touch. If you want to go back to a previous application you were using, you can just tap and flick like so on the left side of your screen. You have to apply just a little bit of pressure to get it to work, but press in and flip over like that, and it'll take you back to Safari or whatever you were in before. Or if you want to bring up the multitasking view without using the home button, once again with 3D Touch, do a harder press on the left hand side of your screen, you'll feel haptic feedback on the iPhone 7 or maybe even the iPhone 6S and be able to view multitasking in all your open apps. And that's going to be a wrap on these hidden features. If you enjoyed it or found it useful, feel free to drop a like down below number one, but also leave a comment down below telling me what you learned. And if you think somebody else would find it useful, I would really appreciate it as well if you took the time to share it with them. Subscribe for more like this in the future. I've been Sam, I hope you're doing great, and I'll talk to you later.